Hello everyone, this is 60% Cat here. I'm going to show you some of my quote-unquote games and uh, tell you kind of what I've been thinking about with them and what I kind of intended and stuff. Um, I would start out with this one. Yeah, I'm going to start from the bottom. So, I call this prototype. So these are all prototypes. None of them are finished games. Um, this one was supposed to be a puzzle kind of game. Um, so the idea was that you combine certain colors to eliminate blocks or something like that. So you can um, click. When you click on one of these blocks, it'll combine the current color, which is displayed by the background color, combine with with its color, like so red and yellow make orange. And then a the little diagram will show you what combinations will make what. So when you do that, the background color changes. This is just for now, this is just like obviously a prototype. And so you would combine different colors and it shows the different triangles to make different colors. Basically how the wheel works, there's seven colors. And so when you click, you're combining two colors. So any two colors will have a middle, the nature of a wheel of seven. There's always gonna be a middle either the same color if it's two of the same color or across from each other like you can see by the shape of the triangle like what the different kind of combinations can be if it's the same it'll it'll be on the same side like that um, so I feel like that could have been still a cool idea like maybe eliminate the blocks when you clear with them or you know as far as the mechanics of the game a lot of different things could happen but that was kind of the basic idea um, this other game is called know your friends and uh, you uh, put in some people who are playing. So we're going to put um, Josephine and Jacqueline. Um, you could also add players. This is all in JavaScript and HTML, CSS. So it's like really simple. Um, so the basic idea is that you ask questions about your friend, so Jacqueline, we have some questions for you. Tell everyone else to stamp out. Have you ever jumped out of an airplane? Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, I did, I have jumped out of her. Have you ever fallen asleep in the cinema? Cause I'm gonna judge you if you have. Um, no, I've never done that. Have you ever purchased from something H&M? Ew, H&M, yeah, I've purchased from there. All right, Jacqueline, you're all finished. And there's some bugs in this, so I don't know if that was the right character, but... Now bring in Josephine! Josephine, are you ready? Yes. Have you ever read something about H&M? No. Have you ever seen the Grand Canyon? No. So it basically asks you different questions. Um, and then, when it's done with the questions, it'll be like, Oh, now it's time to test you all on, on the questions. And so it's bugged out right there. It doesn't work properly. But in theory, it's supposed to be, uh, it'll ask you questions about your friends and it'll test you out and it'll be really sassy about how you know your friends. You're like, oh, I guess, how long have you known each other? Probably not very long if you think like that. So I think that'd be a really fun game to, to polish out. So again, these are all prototype of ideas that I just wanted to sketch out. And, uh, you know, feel free if anybody wants to use these game ideas. I don't really care. Like, ideas are, I think you can try to copyright ideas. But obviously that's impossible because people can reuse the idea slightly and slightly adjust it and make something different and there's nothing you're going to do about it. So um, This game kind of has a long history, sort of. I was supposed to make a game with these other people, blah, blah, blah. Oh, did center. Um, and it's supposed to be like a band music sort of game. And so this is, this is just a prototype of one aspect of the game. I wanted like the music to affect people. I can zoom in a little bit. Um, so in this prototype, you can click different musicians. They'll be different color. And when you click the crowd, um, if it changes their color to that, and you can even blend colors. And, uh, I was thinking that different colors represent different things like blue would be interest and red would be vitality and green would be compassion. Uh, 
and I don't, I don't think you you necessarily mosh the crowd like like I'm doing here, but it's kind of cool that they all have physical bodies and stuff. Basically, the idea was that you'd be at a show, maybe you'd be the band manager or something, and you're trying to make the show run smoothly. So you have to maybe wire things together, mess up people who are messing up the show, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, you can maybe hire bandmates and equip them, and you have to find other ones. I think what it turned out to be a pretty fun game, but just just a lot of elements, a lot of complexity without without like a central idea that makes it fun. And I think that's what I usually find in game design is I'm creating like an essence and I'm building off that essence. And my big problem was when I was, I, I made this game with other people. It just, there wasn't a central essence to this game that you could build off of. It was all like these different ideas, but none of it centrally was fun. Now, if you reference these other games that I've done, I guess know your friends the central concept is it's just kind of like trivia, but with your friends. And that that is a fun idea. That idea of itself is fun. And so you just build off of that. It already has a core that you build off of. Um, puzzle making is, is a pretty, you know, very used concept. Um, but that itself is fun. And we really couldn't figure out why this game would be fun. I mean, it is fun to equip people and do different things. But there wasn't like like a human essence that was that was relevant or existing. Okay, Aegean is a game I'm actually still working on, and it, it looks drastically different than this prototype that's on my website. But I could show you what this prototype was. So, um, I won't tell you about the, the real game design, I'll just tell you about this prototype. So in this prototype, there's all these random polygons, and uh, I was trying to create, create a different physics system than gravity. So in this, there is no gravity, but there is m this sort of magnetism, and it has to do with the colors. So you can see by the colors, red, blue, and green, um, what are magnetized to each other. Um, I'm not exactly sure how, how, what, in what way what works. I'm pretty sure similar colors are attracted to each other, but I couldn't tell you like what the red and blue, like if they would be opposed or not. But after a while watching, you kind of get the idea. So basically, from that mag magnetism creating these random polygons they create kind of their own structures and systems and revolutions and stuff they kind of create their own like little organisms and they're always dynamic and always changing um, so that is something I'm still gonna use in Aegean I'm not gonna use three different energies I'm gonna use two different energies and they're gonna work a little bit differently it's more so that like are I guess the same where their like energies are attracted to each other and opposites are opposed um, but it's going to be an undercurrent layer. You're not going to see the layer. You're only going to see the, the very extreme manifestations of them. Um, so in this prototype, you have this little car guy. I call him a car because originally he was a car. Um, but I modded him to have one more wheel and so he could rotate around. You have these other guys that follow follow you too. These are supposed to be creatures, I guess. And uh, so you can move him a little bit. Uh, what is, he, is he moving? Um, so right now, their wheels, when they touch their wheels to these planets, um, it changes the color in random ways. So basically, in this prototype, you can just touch different planets to kind of change the system out a little bit. Um, so yeah, so not too much you can do, but it's, it's really, even just this is cool. It's like exploration and procedural generation. There's kind of some cool ideas working on in here. So that game is still in progress, and it involves a lot more things. I'll maybe tell you at some other point. Um, now King Eagle is another commissioned game um, so supposedly some high profile guy that lived in Australia wanted a, a kangaroo combined with an eagle and he called it a King Eagle I guess that was a thing and he wanted a game about it so I was kind of interested in making like a mobile game it's something that was really simple so it kind of takes these like flappy bird kind of things ideas and uh, tries to do them in a new way. Um, I just wanted a one button game. I loved that concept, that idea. So this one has music, which the other ones should have music, but. Um, and the music is actually a, a composition by Bach that I put MIDI instruments, I mean, I put um, like 8 bit kind of style instruments to with some reverb. So there's only one button, and that's to jump. And jump and flap as well. So he can flap. And he can only flap a few times once he's airborne. 
but I just wanted to make the most out of simplicity. And I have such fondness for this prototype. I'll call it a game regardless, even though it's not a full game. But it kind of is a game to me. It kind of has the essence of a full game. Even though there's no goals and nothing you else interact with other than the, uh, the ground and, and you, it's enough to be that kind of interaction. You create your own game out of it um, by your own goals. It gives you some, some stats to reference your own goals, but there's really no set goals for you. Um, I think a game has to have an objective to be called a game, officially. But, uh, I don't know, I th there's something so simple and, and well designed about this that I, I really enjoy. Uh, there's definitely more efficient ways to move forward, so you kind of figure that out by playing it. Um, all the mountains are procedurally generated. Um, although, it's not consecutively procedurally generated, just each time you play there's a ton of mountains. Uh, so it won't go on forever, you know, it's easy to make it go on forever, I just never implemented it. And then also the background mountains are the same pattern, just offset in a different way. So you can actually, if you were really good, you could actually use the background to tell where you are. Um, so you can make your own goals by like trying to travel really high or really fast. Um, also, there's proud use of graphics. The only there's only a few sprites, the eye, the just the individual things, the eyes, the the body, and the the wings. And to do the wing animation, I just I do, uh, I, you manipulate the image using programming, uh, but the eyes are, are separate sprites. But still, it's just, I love the idea of using a lot with very, accomplishing a lot using very little. And I think I followed that idiom later in my, in my designs. So these aren't in chromatic order or anything. These are just uh, the, the, uh, the opposite order of which I put them on my website. So you can go to 60percentcat.com to check them out. And this is the game that's progressed the furthest. I've designed this game over an extremely long period of time. Um, but I don't think it'll ever really see fully see the light of day. Uh, hopefully my controller will work. No, it's not. Okay. And there's also supposed to be music here. This is not the latest edition. Um, but this game is kind of your standard dual stick shooting game. Um, as far as the very base of it, which of course is a fun design. Uh, and I guess I'll just talk about this prototype first. So right now you can just move around. You can choose these different weapons. And they do different things. Like this one's more of like a wave. It'll slow everything down. And uh, this one it kind of goes far and fast. It'll actually speed things up that it touches. Um, you can use the enemy's weapons to hit themselves and each other. Um, you can even use the enemy's own momentum. I guess I'll show that in a second. Okay, there's no there's no moving guys. But you can make two moving guys run into each other and they, they'll bust each other up. This is I'm trying to do this on the keyboard, and it's definitely way better with the controller. You can plug in like a PS3 controller or an Xbox controller and it'll it'll instantly work. Um, so like these guys, if they if they kind of get interrupted, like they bumped into him, so it damaged him. So I like I like that aspect. So you collect these energies. There's three different kinds. Um, right now in this prototype they don't do anything, they do jack, um, but I wanted them to c be able to create spells and like improve, improve different aspects of your game. So this has gone through so many different design iterations. Uh, I've made, if you look older on my, uh, on my YouTube channel, you can see the older iPhone versions of this. Um, I tried things with like bosses and I tried like an open world concept, but eventually I want... I kind of decided to have it more like an arcade style. Another game I really referenced was Star Fox. Uh, as far as the level progression, I wanted it to be like that, where you can do different things. It's, it's kind of arcade, where it's always moving forward, but you can do different things to find different paths and discover different storylines. Um, mostly just looked for to have a really tight um, uh, shooting game with high contrast that was really had clean graphics that are of my style too. Like I like cute kind of things. Uh, and to actually have kind of pro play. So to, to give you the to give you the ability to accomplish a lot. And that's a trend that I've followed more in my later uh, designs too. Uh, 
so yeah, you can, you can try to play this if you want. Um, really wish I had the updated version. It has music. I had my cousin work on some sweet music on this. I also like making music too, but uh, I like as much co collaboration when when it when it applies. Um, so yeah, those are some of my prototypes. I can also show you some. No, I didn't make Fooly Cooly. Um, do I have any? I have other things. So those were all box 2D games, other than the, the old version of Aegean. And now I'm really into um, P2.js. Um, this is a really sweet new physics engine. Uh, I'm just looking for my other games here. Uh, I wonder if this is something. But yeah, this new physics engine is way better than Box 2D. It just has a lot more. Um, it's more efficient. It's it's more simple. Um, and those are the things I kind of orient myself towards. Uh, no, I don't think that was anything. Okay, let me try this. So these. Okay, so yeah, this is a good start. So this is to be the game that I'm calling Aegean. Right now, I'm working on the the parts that are. The very beginnings, which are, I had to start with the platforming aspect. Um, so they say not to really use a physics engine for platforming, um, but I try to make my own physics engine, and uh, a lot of the simple stuff, a lot of simple collisions didn't work the way I wanted them to, which could easily be accomplished with a pre-existing physics engine. So I've I've decided to use it. Um, so right now these are just polygons that are generated in different ways and then you can traverse them. Um, so I'll show you the latest iteration of this game. That was an older one. And then this is this is what so this is the stuff that I'm working on right now. Oh god. I'm gonna zoom in. Maybe a little more. So you can kind of see him. So this is your little cat guy. Oh, oops. So, um, oh shit. I better restart this. There's a glitch. So this is, oh fuck, I did it again. I'm trying to just do a higher jump. <laughs> I'm squished. So there's these automatically generated polygons again, but you can do like these wall jumps, or you can you, you regenerate your jumps, and you have a lot of midair jumps. So I basically want to have the the beginning base of this game to be a platforming fighting game. So I really want a really capable platformer. I'm gonna zoom back out. Uh, so I want to where you can traverse really difficult terrain and then be able to fight other people over really difficult terrain and utilize wall jumps so you think like super smash brothers but uh even uh, super smash brothers melee particularly because it's fast and, and furious but even faster <laughs> and uh clean like super meat boy um so those are kind of the, some of the things i reference um but the next aspect of the game is to have these is have uh space fighting so i'm going to turn these polygons into kind of ships um, that you'd be able to install like an engine on and a sensor system, a console and all that good stuff. Um, and right now all I can do is like become telekinetic and move the objects, but that's not exactly what I want to do. Uh, so yeah, you would be able to go on the ships and fight each other and if collisions happen, it would break part of the ship and then you can, you can, uh, jump onto the other person's ship. Um, collect resources, do multiplayer things. There's all sorts of elements that, uh, other dimensions. A lot of elements that I want to work on, and maybe I'll describe it in another video or something. But yeah, that's 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 that video. And those are my games. Um, if you're interested in any of them or you'd like to see more or anything, just let me know. Uh, and thanks for listening.